Okay, right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Startup Ground. First of all, I'd like to thanks to our sponsors. Roo Themes are one of the sponsors. Payfast, where's the Payfast? There he is, right over here. And we've also got Atlantic Invisa for sponsoring this really awesome event. Um, then also there's uh, the guys from <coughs> Small Startup, James. Shout out for him over there. He's pretty event. There's a lost in the family that closed down. Some of the guys are here, so welcome guys for joining us. Cool. Guys, I was in hospital up until recently. I still got my little tick and I thought there's no way that I'm missing out on interviewing Mark Forrester and Magnus Jepson. Give them a round of applause. Please let's stand and a round of applause. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Welcome, guys. Thank you. Mark, welcome. Good to see you, James. Nice. There we go. Can everybody hear at the back there? Oh. All right. Got some comfy on here. Cool. Guys, the questions are going to be posted on there. We'll highlight one or two every now and then again. sli.do forward slash start CPT. And there's all the details for the Wi Fi. Guys, thanks for joining us. Thanks for having us. There we go. All the way from Norway, Magnus. There we go. Quite a trip out. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and right. Claremont. And yeah. Claremont. Whoa, whoa, the traffic. <laughs> and when you say you were in hospital till recently, it was yes. this morning, apparently. Yes. Yeah, you spent the night there. I did indeed. Yes, I did. Okay. Yes. <laughs> well, you can't, can't and you're on out. drugs now. I'm on under, yeah, there might be a few strange drugs. questions coming out, so please do excuse me. Cool. Mark, let's start with you, because um, we were going to invite and interview you originally. And um, luckily for us, Magnus was able to join us, which is really great. Where did you, where were you born? Let's start, right at the start. Right at the beginning. Right at the beginning. Um, I was born in the UK, um, in London, and lived there till I was nine years old. Um, grew up in the Cotswolds, um, and then, yeah, moved to South Africa, to Cape Town, when I was nine years old, when my parents got divorced. Uh, my mother's South African, my dad's English, my dad's here today, actually. Okay, here we go, give a round of there. Biggest, there biggest <laughs> fan right here, yeah. Awesome, welcome. Um, and yeah, I went to school um, in the southern suburbs and went to University of Cape Town, did information systems. Wow. And um, yeah. How long, how long was the information systems course? That was three years. Three years. Bachelor okay. of Commerce, yeah. And did you enjoy doing it, you know, was it, um, <coughs> it um, UCT that you did the course? It was at UCT, yeah. It's where I met my wife, so oh, uh -huh. that was my biggest accomplishment there, I think. <laughs> <laughs> um, and yeah, before that I'd done a digital design diploma. That was at a design agency in Cape Town, and that gave me my sort of grounding in yeah, desktop publishing, a bit of video editing, 3D animation. Which has helped you with your business? On the creative side, definitely, the creative side. yeah. Okay. Yeah, whereas yeah, the Bachelor of Commerce degree was more the business background and yeah, I think the combination of those skills has helped me tremendously. Yeah. Okay. And Magnus, let's start with you. Where did you born, raised? Well, Norway. Stavanger for anybody who's known in Norway. Uh, it's on the west coast, so uh, uh, raised in Norway. Uh, I've got an English dad, a Norwegian mother, so uh, I kind of half and half. Okay, um, so, so there's both of you. Yeah. Four, uh, four continents across the... Yes, exactly. Years. So... Uh, but I've always uh, like spoken Norwegian and uh, when growing up, and uh, it's only recently I started speaking English to my dad just because he has a bad hearing, so I have, he listens better in English, I guess. So uh, <laughs> uh, Norwegian isn't his first language, so he's okay. uh, always so. Yeah, that's. Um, uh, should I continue with the schools or yes, uh, yeah, or was that a follow-up question? No, no, go for it. Yeah, so I. Um, studied in Norway. I, uh, I'm an avid golfer, so I had the opportunity to go to the States and study, but I was more interested in kind of working with IT. It's always been a big hobby of mine since I was a young kid, playing video games, and I think yeah, I would just uh, wanted to get straight into working with IT and uh, did a two-year bachelor degree uh, IT and then just got straight into working and I worked in a company for seven years before I... What company was it? That was um, a, a, a company selling a point of sale system for the biggest uh, electronic chains in, oh. in Norway, Scandinavia, uh, owned by Dixons in the UK for anybody who knows that. So I was the guy who... and it was a character based tw 24, 24 by 80 characters, so basically you had to push it, position your uh, characters on the screen for us. So it wasn't really designed 
Okay. Right. So okay. that's probably how I got into design. And as what a was hobby. your actual job at? Um, I programmed and uh, the was program. it software embedded programming or was it all software based? As in all computer? software, but yeah. Okay. It wasn't so, like, yeah. so it's it's a it's an ancient system from I guess uh, the uh, the eighties back from so the blue with the white writing top thing. Exactly. Yeah. So it's uh, it's called <laughs> it's called Databus and it wasn't sexy or anything. So uh, got the job done. Got the job done and it was oh. efficient and that's. I mean, if you're checking out of the store, you need to have, kind of use the keyboard, not with the mouse. So that's uh, yeah. that's what they still use to this day to day. So yeah. and uh, nowadays, do you have you found that you still stick in the older school, like on the keyboard, not using the mouse, more like Linux side or? Well, or, I, I'm or? always a, a keyboard sh shortcut kind of guy. So uh, I see some guys and they're kind of using the mouse, and I'm like, so why are you so inefficient? <laughs> so but that's. Uh, I guess when you grow up with a computer and then uh, work with the program, you get into those kind of shortcuts and sure. yeah. So okay. Mm. Do you use any special keyboards like a Dvorak keyboard or something like that? No, no, no. no. no it's just standard. I, 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 but I was the probably the last guy on uh, in Wolf Teams to transition to a Mac, so I was always on the PC. Oh, I see. They, Everybody else on Mac. They, they gave us a hard, they like, gave, uh, gave me a hard time about that for uh, I guess up to 2010. I guess. Yeah. Took a while. <laughs> took, took a while. Yeah, so no. Um, but I, I now see the benefits of the Mac, obviously, so I'm a big Apple fan. But of course, you're going to say it's on the design side of things. On the design yes, side, yes. but obviously a PC is still okay. uh, the, the most efficient, I guess, okay. if you're into kind of hard code, the hardcore okay. coding. Sure. Mm. Okay, now, where did, where did you guys meet? Internet. The internet, yeah. <laughs> the internet. <laughs> yeah. The World Wide Web. Yeah, in um, 2007, we were complete strangers. I was living wow. in London. Um, after university I went over there and I was freelancing as a web designer um, and yeah playing around with this thing called WordPress yeah um, and 2007 I 2007 sure. yeah it was like um, of WordPress. and I guess yeah we sort of met end of 2007 and that was literally through our WordPress blogs um, okay like, hey I like your blog Ooh, I like your blog. pretty much it was yeah, yeah, yeah commenting on each other's articles well that, that was one <laughs> Exactly. Um, yeah, that's how I met Adi initially. Okay. Um, Adi was in Cape Town, and he was uh, he was our third co-founder, mm. and um, he yeah he was studying at University of Stellenbosch, and he was also dabbling around with WordPress and building some sites and interviewing um, international sort of startup founders to build that sort of an audience, and um, yeah he reached out to me. Because yeah, I was designing sites for a lot of South African clients from the UK. From the UK, yeah. But you had your experience because you'd grown up here and done yeah, studies. Exactly. So you had yeah, exactly. Yeah. And then yeah, he sent me an email saying, "Next time you're over, why don't we meet up for a coffee?" Um, he's playing around with the the idea of a commercial theme for WordPress. Okay. And um, yeah, I'd sort of been following him online and following a guy called Brian Gardner, who was the other guy who was um, experimenting with commercial themes at the time. Uh, him and Eddie were the only two, really. Um, and yeah, I met up for coffee on one of my trips back, I think in like October, November 2007. And um, yeah, I mean, this is going into the story of Wii Teams. <laughs> yeah, so cool. I don't want to jump cool. ahead. No, no, go for it. But um, yeah, Eddie um, created a theme called Premium News Theme. And WordPress at the time was a very simple blogging system. Okay. Um, and yeah, journal formatted homepage, just showing your blog post, widgetized sidebar maybe with your archives and your categories and you add your logo in the top and that was it. And he had this idea of creating a sort of magazine, easy and um, sort of layout for WordPress um, with a theme options panel, okay. um, which allowed the user to add their logo, move the sidebar, far more widgetized regions, a featured slider with yeah, featured blog posts, um, yeah, like triple column, it sort of newspaper like look and feel. Tweaking it up and yeah. adding more features to it. And yeah, the end user could completely adapt the styling of the site just from the theme options panel. So this was quite re revolutionary at the time. Were there other people doing this at the time? It was only him really and Brian Gardner. Really? Um, from the US. From the US, yeah. Wow. Studio Press is what okay. they're called. Mm. Um, and yeah, he asked me if I would be keen to reskin his premium news theme. Um, he never thought of his design skills um, as his main yeah, his his so main he skill. He was he was the more sort of sense. hacker okay. and yeah he, he put together this yeah quite incredible theme options panel at the time. 
um, and asked if I'd be keen to sort of reskin it um, yeah, with some CSS and some different templates and yeah, at the time um, I basically just copied the CNN um, <laughs> website look and feel and I, the it slightly and, <laughs> exactly, and I called it the Gazette theme <laughs> nice. and um, we sold it on premiumnewstheme.com which is his sales site and we negotiated just a profit share on that nice. um, and yeah I mean maybe you want to you were meeting AD at around the same time it was the same kind of story from, from my part where I just I used WordPress a bit on the side mm. uh, I had a task of building uh, the website for my local golf club and uh, so this friend suggested you use WordPress and uh, yeah. WordPress seemed kind of hard to, because it wasn't actually a PHP script which you can plug into yes. your existing HTML site uh, but I uh, I gave it a try I used the free theme downloaded it to try and customize it and then suddenly saw the power of, of WordPress oh, and then was uh, it hard to make a transition from your basic HTML pure I think so because over to this MVC form I, I think so because PHP wasn't my strongest suit so I, I was more into HTML CSS and then uh, I if it was something I needed a dynamic news for I, I would just pop in something I, I think I use something called cute news uh, cute little news. PHP script put it in the bottom bottom where I needed a news uh, section and, and I kind of worked so I, I, I didn't see the need to kind of move over to uh, using because you had to make the whole design around WordPress and I was kind of like that's a backward way of doing it but then I suddenly <laughs> saw the benefits of doing this and because you could easily change your skin of the whole website using themes yes so uh, I started making a couple of uh, websites for friends and for the local golf club and then I made a few free th themes which I put up on my website for download and they suddenly like I also got a fight early, don't nice. worry. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> Boats are leaving. <laughs> so uh, that initially brought uh, thousands of downloads. Uh, wow. And then I saw, hmm, there's a big market here. And then it was only, I think, AD and Brian Gardner who were, were selling themes. And I thought, like, it must be some must be something in this. Some in this something in this. And I, so I just sent an email to AD because I was uh, following his blog. He was writing about design and WordPress themes. And then he was very open to, uh, I was kind of surprised to get a reply, uh, but he was open to me doing a design for him or with him and then I just designed something uh, on a Friday evening with a beer in my hand and then sent it to him and next week we had a, a theme coded and started selling that and then at the same time Mark came on so we had three themes on, on premiumnewstheme.com and we saw that we were actually making sales every day and then we wow. thought this is something we need to push push on with so that's how we kind of mm. so um, your connection with Audi was almost different to your connection with Mark mm. although you guys together had been blogging with each other and prior to I, this, or was I it totally separate I didn't know Mark before, Mark before I met him already so okay so then through him he was like oh by the way I'm also developing with Mark and then so the connection yeah. was mm. grown yeah okay cool mm. I think awesome. the big attraction for us was I mean I was freelancing at the time and charging by the hour for design work and and all of a sudden it sort of shifted my whole thinking completely that I could sell my design service as a product yeah. and earn like an annuity based sort of passive income yeah. from yeah. it. And okay, so started off at the competitors and also started climbing in at this stage. Um, how did you find, how did you handle those stages? Well, the early days we didn't really have any competition. Oh, exactly. uh, so it was, it was yeah. quite amazing how little competition there was in the beginning, like for the first year it was only me uh, well, us and uh, uh, Studio Press or Brian Gardner, who was Revolution Theme, I think it was called. Yeah. And uh, a couple others popped up, but uh, they only had like one or two themes. And, uh, and you guys are building this entire store of I themes. think we had the benefit of being a, a three-person team in the beginning. Okay. Uh, we, all the other guys were just one person, one person, and I kind of held them back a bit. So I think it, getting the first traction that was important for us. So mm. Brian was in the US, you mm. were in London at the stage, Norway yeah. and audience in Africa. Yeah. Yeah. How did the time changes? How was that? Well, was, was it nice? Because well, I mean, you, okay, first of all, coders do never sleep. They're always working at night. Yeah. So that fits in perfectly time while Brian was awake during the day. Well, Brian was a completely separate business. Yeah. He was, oh, yeah, he we, we didn't know Brian at the time. Oh, okay. um, and between the three of us, I mean, Magnus was pretty much in the same time yeah, zone as me in London. 
and 80 was only an hour behind, I think. Mm. Yeah. Okay. But so it like worked out, even though geographically we were so far apart, mm. okay. yeah, we could work exactly the same hours, really. Now we've got your things going here. What's the next stages? Where did you guys, did you guys decide, right, we're going to make this global? Or what were your next thinking about this? Well, we hadn't really met up or anything. We just talked over Skype and not even voice calls. So we hadn't, hadn't even heard each other's <laughs> voice. I think I've... I'd seen you two guys on the show call from the couch, which uh, the guys from Obox Films uh, had back in the day, and I can that's the only kind of real life interaction yeah. I've seen with you. So <laughs> I think it took 16 months before we actually met up in person, and by that time we were probably at the stage where we were. Well, I was still in my uh, normal job, but that was the time where they kind of convinced me to go freelance yeah, myself. Yes. And but it was always in the beginning like uh, we were always like doing 50-50 with freelance and then the themes business on the side mm. uh, before we, well it, it grew and grew but we thought this can't last forever mm. so that we always needed a backup and that's why I stayed in my uh, normal co coding job and programmer job so uh, I think yeah. Yeah I mean to go back a few steps we when we registered premium news theme we, we operated under that for I think about four or five months and um, yeah, on sort of profit share agreements, um, but we hadn't registered a business or anything mm -hmm. like that. And when we saw, you know, the true potential of it, all these sales trickling in, uh, we would get these e-junkie um, notifications in our inbox saying, you've just made a sale, $40. And yeah. then 10 minutes later, you get another That's one, and you wake up the next morning, there's like 15 of them, and you're like, wow, okay, this is, <laughs> this is, this is nice. something. <laughs> yeah. um, so we decided, hey, we're on to something good here. We didn't give it much thinking. We just said, let's register a business. Mm -hmm. and, and we all got along really well. And we agreed upon yeah, an equal split. And uh, registered. we registered Woo Themes in, I think, July 2008. Mm. Um, and we actually had a diff another business partner at the time. Um, the last couple months of Premium News Theme, we um, collaborated with a guy called Elliot J. Stocks. Um, very well-known British uh, web designer, okay. and he just left his job um, at Cosonified, which is run by Ryan Carson, um, who now has Team Treehouse. Um, and Elliot, we asked him if he'd be keen to design a theme for us. I think early on we realized the importance of having different templates and different styles all together. And, and um, obviously as a web designer, you carry your sort of style across a lot of your mm. themes and your mm. designs. And, it was good to have that um, break. That break, yeah, well, that diversity in our offering. And Elliot uh, produced a theme called Proud Folio, F Proud Folio, Proud Folio, and that was um, our first sort of portfolio-based theme for web designers and or you anyone just who needs a portfolio. This one now has themes. Another portfolio. I saw email coming through today. I think it was yesterday. Uh, photographers. Photographers. Yeah. Okay, okay. So somewhat okay, similar. similar. Yeah. Similar, okay. But Elliot was a, a shareholder. Um, in the very early days, but he'd left Carsonified because he wanted to pursue a sort of freelance career. Cool. And um, yeah, I think he had quite a good um, reach and um, he was keen to just experiment. And, and I don't think he wanted to jump straight into a new business and mm. he had reservations with that. Um, so quite early on, he said, guys, I love what's happening here, but I think I need to go pursue my own thing. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, then it was the three of us from about July 2008. Okay. And you guys have now all decided to do this full time? Yeah, yeah. Going flat out? Well, I think I, I still was in my job there because oh, I, I, didn't, job there. I didn't fully like uh, commit to it yet. <laughs> Even though the money was trickling in, but there was think, money but, coming. But in Norway we have a, when you, when you quit your job you have to work still three months. So I think I had, my uh, last day was in September 2008 or something like that. But uh, they convinced me uh, like for over a year to do it, but I just didn't do like want to. And the presentation later in. Was actually, yeah. I actually tried to convince my boss to to uh, let me have three months off to try and uh, pursue this oh, new thing. Okay. But he uh, instantly said, "No, this is something that if you want to do it, you can bring it in house and you can work it on one day uh, a week." Uh, but uh, so I said, "What about the earnings then?" Well, that would have to go, go through our company. I'm like. That doesn't mm. make sense. And then <laughs> next day with a resignation. resignation. Yeah. Okay. So. And the support, the themes are going out. I know um, theme development, there's a problem with support. Mm. How did you guys manage this between the three of you? I think our 
initial product was quite sim simple. I mean, okay. it had this complicated theme options panel, but um, people weren't customizing that too heavily. It was just uh, style sheet And I suppose most of the people using that were web developers anyway. It was yeah. like the man on the street going, oh, let's plug this. Yeah, it was sort of a combination works. of end users okay. and web designers sort of using it as a building block for client work. Okay. Um, and over time, it's probably evolved to more and more web designers, developers, agencies um, okay. with the building block and less end users. But still, we've got that combination. Oh, sure. And we've okay. always got to consider both types of users. So back in the day, it was quite easy for the sport, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, we had a, a, a was it a BB press forum? Well, I think first, uh, Eddie just answered support emails uh, directly. And then he started telling us that, look, there's actually quite a lot of emails I have to answer <laughs> each day. So, <laughs> so then we said, OK, one. well, we, can, we might as well join in then. And then we opened the BB press forum on, on WordPress on our site. And then uh, it was actually in the beginning, it was like, we had no schedule or anything. If somebody asked something, it might take two days for us to get back to them. And, but nobody seemed to like complain like they do this uh, today. <laughs> these days, yeah, these days like two hours, this is the problem. Exactly, so uh, back then uh, we just had a forum and uh, uh, there wasn't too many questions in the beginning, but uh, then we kind of saw a need for it to, uh, to have a, a, some, somebody help us out. So we got, uh, I think we got some part-time uh, employees uh, trying to uh, like just do tickets, uh, but they were obviously web designers just needing okay. some extra cash and we kind of uh, got them mm. to help us out in the beginning. How did, how did you approach it? How did you get the guys? I'm now starting other things. Just on our blog, just saying we need, we uh, need help. We need help, yeah. And, and if somebody answered the thing correctly, did you pay them or how did it work? I think we just went by tickets and uh, we understood that it's hard to like uh, train when it's, we don't have any training or facilities okay. or anything. Yeah. So. In the beginning, we'd, if they had any questions, they'd just ask us on Skype and we'd uh, answer it. And, but uh, I think... Yeah, we paid them per ticket, I think it was. It yeah, we tried we to have some, something like that, but okay. I, we saw it quickly that that didn't work out. It was too hard to manage. Like, yeah, and yeah. it wasn't like uh, you would uh, do some short answers just to get a lot of cash. So uh. <laughs> Quickly uh, learn. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, so what was your next steps after this? So, um, yeah, we were playing around with the magazine themes, the portfolio themes. Um, we started building more and more business themes, um, general business where the home page wasn't designated as the blog. Um, it would have a big featured slider and, you know, some static content and, and maybe some social profiles. And, yeah, trying to transform WordPress from its sort of blogging background into something that was more of a yeah, content management system. Um, and yeah, we, we built themes for quite a few years. Um, and we, we built some niche um, themes with more specific functionality and um, complex functionality. We built a um, estate agent theme. So it had its own custom post types and you could add real estate in there and manage your real estate as an agent. Um, we built a diner theme for restaurants with a sort of mini bookings engine. Oh, nice. um, so we just experimented in a whole bunch of different niches. Mm -hmm. um, but theming was our business yeah, until, well, 20 months ago, 24 months ago, yeah, about two years ago, um, which is when we completely transformed our business with our WooCommerce offering. Okay, so up until that stage, you guys have become now Woo Themes, mm. running Woo Themes just in the themes, and then you decided, all right, Time to change. Twenty months ago, what what brought about the change? Was it because you you found there was a need for it, or yeah, we saw some competitors come out with uh, uh, e-commerce themes where yeah. every all the functionality was built in, and we say, oh, well, this is it, the the next step for us as well. So we uh, hired people to uh, third-party developers to kind of program this for us. Uh, and uh, we saw how hard it was to actually get something done. And I think we had some core uh, WordPress uh, contributors as well working wow. for us, but they also okay. flopped for some reason. Uh, and uh, we, then we thought, okay, it's probably best to partner up with somebody who's actually got a plugin. Uh, and uh, we looked at different plugins, got some partnerships, uh, talks going, and uh, then we suddenly saw this new plugin, uh, which called Jigoshop. 
and we uh, were already working with the, the two guys. Uh, they already made a couple of themes for us, uh, like a support press theme, which was a support based. And their themes really worked very well. And they yeah, and we team. saw how, how efficient they, these guys were, and, and we found out these two were the guys who were actually coding this plugin for, for this other company. So I think that's around the time where we s thought, okay, maybe it's. The, and we installed it and saw how easy it was, and, and I said, this is our kind of. Product. So uh, we wanted to do a partnership with them, but then uh, these two developers came to us and said, "Look, we want to do something new, and and uh, would you be willing to do a partnership with us?" And oh, since well. it's all GPL, uh, they thought, "Let's build our own version based on what we've built here." And uh, I don't know if you want to touch on that. I'm not the best person to explain that whole GPL thing, but uh, he throws me in the deep end. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, go for it. Go for it. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, it was obviously a debatable uh, decision by, by Sam, and um, yeah, we decided to fork Jigger Shop. Um, WordPress itself started as a fork of B2. B2, that's right, yes. Um, in 2003, 2002. Um, so yeah, when we made this announcement, obviously it was received um, good and bad, but um, yeah, we got support from a lot of the core WordPress team saying, okay. look, this is why we built WordPress the way we have GPL license. We want to encourage it's you know, to it to evolve and contributions to vary. And, and um, yeah, we, we launched <laughs> it um, under WooThemes as WooCommerce with Mike and Jay, these two developers um, who came on and joined us full time. Oh, so they actually then came into the fold. They now, came the into way. the business, yeah. Okay. Where are they located? They're in England. Yeah. Oh, they're in England. Yeah. Okay. And they were just uh, employed under uh, Gigawatt, the company who uh, uh, developed Gigashop. And, uh, and they kind of felt that they wanted a bigger piece of the pie and uh, we gave them that opportunity. And uh, sure. so it worked out for all of us. Okay. So uh, that's how we kind of got into the e-commerce uh, e side of things. So now WooCommerce being a free, awesome plugin, mm -hmm. how do you generate money out of it? What is the model for that? Yeah, I mean, it was our first experiment in the sort of freemium space. Um, we'd launched a lot of free themes um, to sort of drive traffic to our site. Um, and we had all our commercial themes. But this idea of you know, giving away the core product for free, uh, how are we going to commercialize it and upsell? And um, we always wanted WooCommerce itself to be very lean and you know, do the job of selling a digital or a physical product. But that's about it. And um, then build, yeah, little extensions on top of it. An extension being a plugin, another plugin, but a plugin that works on the WooCommerce plugin. Um, so we call them extensions. And um, yeah, these extensions range from integration with South African Postal Office to a payment gateway in Canada to um, integration with an accounting package. We've got about 210 extensions now, um, ranging from fifty dollars to two hundred dollars um, and yeah WooCommerce itself is free it works with PayPal out of the box um, but if you want this niche functionality you can either build it yourself as an extension or you can buy from our catalog is that and that's where you get your revenue from that's where you make money but also through shop themes I, I think mm. in the in the beginning our idea was to sell themes and we just needed functionality mm. through a plugin okay. and then we suddenly saw wait it isn't through themes we're making the money it's actually through the extensions because people yeah. were taking woocommerce buying extension and, and then, then realizing hey we need this thing to go a bit further and buy the yeah, extensions and, the, and they would just make their own sites from their own, uh, use uh, third party themes so okay. uh, then we realized hmm well mm. actually Anybody can use Woo WooCommerce, so uh, uh, that's now why we focus so much on, on extensions instead and like building more functionality into WooCommerce okay. instead of just focusing on themes. Like and then you've got the Woo Dojo that plugs into that, and you've got. We've got quite a suite of plugins now, um, but WooCommerce is definitely our flagship product these days. Um, but yeah, we've, we've got quite a few free plugins. Um, Woo, Woo Dojo being one of them is similar to the sort of Jetpack um, WordPress plugin uh, which enables a whole bunch of extra widgets social widgets and um, okay. yeah I think our, 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 our thought is to uh, take functionality out of the theme mm. and then put it into a plugin so that 
if you decide to use our themes, that's great. But if you then want to move to another theme uh, or ma make a custom theme in the future, you still have that functionality because you have those free plugins. <laughs> so uh, that's what we learned with uh, WooCommerce. Uh, and uh, maybe in the beginning, we thought, well, what's the point of uh, putting uh, plugins, uh, putting putting the functionality in plugins and giving away for free because nobody will buy your theme then? But if we make our themes compatible with all our pl plugins, it'll be a big selling point for. So that's kind of the, the way we're going now and, and kind of making it the themes more of a design and, and less functionality. Mm. I suppose that's actually almost um, fits in with um, WordPress's yeah. ethos as well. Mm. They like to keep things very separate. Mm. Now, your decision to go with the Payfast and making that a free plugin for South African e commerce, how did that come about? Um, so, yeah, South African e commerce, they, they wasn't many options available um, for people wanting to set up shop over here. Um, we've had extensive chats with a lot of payment gateways. We integrate now with about 100 payment gateways, but locally, um, obviously we're a proudly South African business. And um, yeah, we put our feelers out, I think, to um, a lot of the payment gateway providers over here. And Verna, um, I think, got in contact with me and we started talking and then um, we've got a business development manager now, he reached out to Werner and, and we built this extension um, integrating with their gateway and um, yeah, it was a commercial extension and um, after a few months we negotiated a deal with, with Payfast um, whereby yeah, we could launch it for free um, and take a small commission on sales that went through. Um, the shops um, at no expense to the end user, end user. Um, so it was sort of a win-win um, and yeah I think we're trying to bring down the sort of barriers to entry for e-commerce users best we can all around the world yeah. um, but obviously it's great to, to build relationships here in South Africa and, sure. okay. and really lot, try and yeah, produce a sort of leading e-commerce solution locally. Yeah. I think we can see that from WooCommerce growing to be a small plugin to having 1.7 million downloads, people oh. start to recognize it as a, as a growing platform and, and the actual payment gateway that contact mm -hmm. us and want to do the partnership. So in the beginning we had to code it using their API and, yes. and kind of that, uh, so it, when it switched around like this then we realized okay maybe it's a big benefit for us as a company to have <laughs> these as free to, to grow the platform even bigger. So. We're now focusing mm. more and more on, on having free <coughs> payment game gateways and, and having a, a dialogue with the payment gateway itself so and, and doing deals so the actual customer gets uh, benefit out benefits of out of that, yeah. Okay. And then uh, policy changes apparently were quite a big thing a month or two ago. Yeah. Tell us about the full process. Yeah, so we updated our prices and our licensing system a few months ago um, when we launched in 2008. Um, we had no competition, we had no one to really compare our prices to. We sort of set our prices as a bit of a thumb suck and um, we set our licenses to lifetime support, lifetime updates and I think looking back at that it was such a stupid move. I mean <laughs> promising everyone um, lifetime updates is just not a su sustainable Sustain. business um, model and yeah, we've been dealing with the aftermath of that for years and obviously it's been accumulating. Um, and a lot of our users, you know, that policy works fine. But if we sell a theme once or for $70 um, and based on our data, we started working out that every support ticket was costing us $5. If we've got a user who uses Canvas theme for three years and submits three or four tickets every six months, quickly we start losing money on, on that product and um, yeah, if we want to be around for a long time and now with our platform offering and so many businesses dependent on our offering not just the aesthetics of their website we power the functionality behind them I think we need to be around for a long time we want to obviously be around for a long time and the changes we put in place and the licenses um, means that yeah, we now charge every couple, well, every year for license renewals okay. um, for support and for updates. For support and and updates. obviously, I mean, we made some mistakes as well. Um, we didn't grandfather users in. Um, we, based on data and a lot of, a lot of talking and discussing, uh, we decided 
we're going to be very transparent about this, but we need to enforce it and make sure that um, yeah, we charge everyone the sort of upgrade fee in a couple of years' time. Okay. Um, two years online is an eternity, but a lot of people still complained about that. Mm. Um, and quite quickly, we sort of retracted that and uh, decided to grandfather our users in. Okay. So the guys that have bought it, sometimes they can maintain with the yeah. license, and then those that are buying now, they'll actually yeah. put it on yeah. the year. Well, we actually gave them the option. Like we, we, we try and be as transparent as possible on our sure. blog and share all the lessons that we're learning, the mistakes we're making. And yeah, we set up a whole case study of you know, the thinking behind this. And we said, hey, look, we realize you know, we didn't speak to you before, um, but we do value your input. Um, but you know, these are the reasons why we did it. Um, the choice is yours, really. If you want to support our new uh, business model or understand the challenges we face, um, then you can opt in or opt out of the grandfathering. Okay. Okay, so it's up to leave it up to the user there. Yeah. Okay. And um, this uh, was quite a fallout, or you know, a lot of backlash that you got from the public. How have you found your numbers and sales? Did it take a dip? Is it still growing? How's the metrics on that side? You know, well, the, what we kind of it's all experimenting. So from the beginning when we started with themes, it we just said okay, seventy dollars for a product, and uh, we really didn't know. But that there's just only two two people on the on the market that time. That time, so it's the prices have remained. So uh, five years passed, and we're still seventy bucks. So we, yeah. why aren't we raising our prices? But I guess since there's more competition, we have to kind of keep our prices keep low and, and keep them competitive because you have theme forest who charge uh, all the way from 30 to 60 dollars I guess so but um, yeah I think uh, what we saw from the first month uh, what our kind of strategy was to raise our prices and try and be uh, the, the forerunners to uh, and saying look uh, we can't just give lifetime support anymore because it's not going to be so sustainable so if you are serious about being in the business uh, of, of WordPress then you then you need to change your model and I think we've always tried to push, the, uh, since we were the first guys on the market, we always tried to push kind of the, the rules of the, of the marketplace as well. And uh, with uh, just seeing our first month, we saw that our basket size went from like 60 bucks on average up to 99 bucks. So that meant that, that there was uh, less people buying, but their basket size was bigger. So okay. we retained, we actually went up a bit, uh, uh, like to five or 10% on the, in the first month. So. It didn't hurt ourselves at all, and that was kind of what we were hoping for. Uh, that maybe take a little hit, but we would then have less customers who wanted to be customers, and uh, on that we would also get less support, which meant that we could use resources from support on development instead. Okay. So that was so our thing. Then they actually able now to offer better, yeah, more premium products. I yeah. suppose. I think it's just the type of user okay. that WooCommerce attracts. We we over the last couple of years we've been implementing more and more um, analytics tools <coughs> to really track you know the information about our users on our site we don't have any tracking code in WooCommerce itself so as soon oh. as people download it it's it. it's gone so okay. we need to really track what they're doing on our site and the type of users they are and and with WordPress and it being open source a lot of people expect everything for free yeah and it's very difficult when we've produced such a massive um, plugin now that really yeah, innovates on top of WordPress and allows e-commerce functionality. Um, people need to understand that you know, their costs incurred, we've got a team of 30 now, um, and highly skilled developers, designers, su um, support technicians all around the world. And um, it's their livelihoods and we need to, yeah, like Actually, I said, that's be around for a long time. I think it's quite like an education process for it, teaching our customers to take maybe a higher fee from their customers uh, mm. but that's why we all obviously gave them the, the option to grandfather in for the old customers but uh, so many people have come back and said look you guys are doing fantastic I'm, I'm killing it on, uh, on your products it's it's so beneficial to me and my company so they actually support our new license uh, and structure so for them uh, to just have those people come back to us has been awesome after we did those okay. changes and got lots of negative feedback on the sure. blog but they sent us personal messages okay. I think yeah, also the one percent rule applies mm -hmm. you know the the amount of people actually commenting on our blog even though it looks like you know a hundred comments of you know negative negative feedback um, compared to the amount of people actually downloading and using our products 
is yeah, like one percent, and you've obviously got to listen to all your users, sure. but trust your data as well. Mm. So it's actually quite a growth strategy for you guys going through this. Yeah, we learned a lot, definitely. Um, there was a question. On this. Okay, so this is one question up here. Top one for people that voted. What has been the biggest improvement in your business in the last year, and what goals do you have for 2014 and beyond? I like that question. one over there. Um, yeah, I think, as we said, the last two years, WooCommerce, 1.7 million downloads. It's incredible growth we've had, but scaling the business has been a massive learning curve for us. You know, me coming as a freelance designer, Magnus a developer, and Eddie with a finance background, you know, it's a lot of learning for us. Um, and yeah, just putting together some sort of structure in the business and um, policies with the team growing to 30 now. Um, we spend a lot of time internally um, focusing on, yeah, improving the WooThemes machine. Um, the plan going forward to 2014 is just, we want to continue to build like lasting relationships with our customers through our product offerings. Um, and we want to see more and more businesses thriving off our products and building businesses and on top of our product, building extensions um, on top of it. Yeah, e-commerce is definitely very much our focus, um, capitalizing on that. And yeah, we've got some big extensions planned coming up. Um, and yeah, potentially some sort of SaaS offering on top of WooCommerce. For sure, for sure. I think we saw from, we had a, a Woo trip in, in to WordCamp Europe and we saw there, we met up with some of our third party developers and actually see that they're running a business on top of Woo themes wow. and kind of getting that uh, a good feeling inside that we are actually supporting other businesses and, and that was quite a nice feeling. Yeah, yeah and that's sure. that's what we want to build further on uh, and improve uh, with other uh, third-party developers and kind of meet them face to face and see that these are actual people who have a business running just on uh, on on WordPress yes. and, and Woo themes. So uh, I think it was quite a surprise for me as well to see on the theming side, uh, not only on the on the on the uh, extension side, we saw on the theming side as well because we've never actually uh, customized. Uh, themes for our customers, we always point to them in another direction and say, look, go to this company instead. And we met some, uh, a Danish company called uh, Codable, and they actually make, get 85% of their customers through WooThemes and wow. uh, grown their team just on us. I'm like, hmm, how did I know about this? And uh, <laughs> this is the first time I'm meeting you. Wow. So, so that kind of feeling uh, really shows that we've grown to be a bigger than just the three of us in the beginning. and. Yeah. And I think that's kind of the biggest improvement we've done in the last couple of years uh, and uh, what we want to kind of grow on in the future, sure. those partnerships. Okay, question, finances. Managing, money's coming in from all over the world. Everybody buys um, WooCommerce plugins and the themes. How do you guys as headquarters in Cape Town manage the financial side? Um, you're getting at rands and dollars and all the different stuff. How? What are the challenges there? Really? I'm so not the right person to ask <laughs> this, but I mean, the business structuring is complicated now and um, WooThemes is registered in South Africa. Um, our merchant account is in America. Um, and yeah, we've also got registered companies in other countries as well. Norway. Okay. In Norway, yeah. <laughs> um, so we've had a lot of financial advisors helping on that side. Okay. Um, but yeah, South Africa is where the business is registered. South Africa is where we pay our tax. Is that a, do you, do you feel that's a good move on a business side? Or is it just because you like loyal to South Africa? Or what is the, the Well, I don't think it's it? a good business move seeing the amount of tax we pay. But, <laughs> but we're proudly South African and yeah, yeah we want to contribute back, of course. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. That's quite cool. Give them a round of applause. <laughs> really, well done. <laughs> Managing 30 staff eh? across how many different countries? About seven countries now. Seven countries. Yeah. Challenges. How do you guys use Basecamp, or what do you guys use to actually manage your your staff, the yeah. timelines, the projects? The I mean, I think it's always uh, evolving, and uh, we like we started out with Skype, and then uh, we've got use P two, which is a a, a message is boards P2? log that uh, WordPress uses internally as well. Um, okay. And that's basically how we chat every day is through Skype and through our P2 blogs and email and now we're looking into uh, other systems where we can actually have better group chats and 
also using Google Hangout just to have a simple uh, team chats or, or just hanging out and <coughs> drinking beer together, I guess. Uh, but we want to kind of do more and more uh, interaction where we actually see each other because we could see the benefits of meeting up in, in Europe. And we last year we had a trip down here where we brought 25 people down here for the Woo trip. And just the people seeing that South Africa is actually a wonderful place and not kind of like what they think of Africa in the beginning. And that's the first time I came down here. It's like, wow, this is actually a fantastic country. It's cheap <laughs> and it's lux luxurious. So. Um, for as a Norwegian, it's uh, I think it just getting that face-to-face -face interaction is so valuable, and that's why I decided to come down here for four months now. Uh, it's winter in Norway, though, so it's uh, uh, snow. I think it's a bit more of an enticement. <laughs> yeah, but uh, I think just being in the office with these guys, uh, having that face-to-face -face interaction is, is so valuable, and uh, we try and get that more and more with the team. Go out of kind of. Uh, uh, text chats on Skype and, and try and do more video. Uh, more video. Yeah. yeah, I mean, you can have all the online tools in the world, but it's important to just connect offline. Mm -hmm. And we try and do that once a year. And I mean, it's also quite difficult when we've got this distributed team, everyone works from home. And then we've got this Cape Town head office where people are required to come into the office. Okay. And just trying to be fair on everyone. Um, like I said, with us scaling, you know, all the structures we put in place, it's important that we just keep um, going back and looking at the yeah the various policies we've got in place and we want to be as flat as possible but you know with the growth we need this management team um, I think we, the we also want to, to focus more on having small teams meet in different countries for example in the US they all, all meet up or the the developers meet up uh, at a place uh, and kind of adopting the same uh, model that Automatic have uh, they've written about it in their newest book and we kind of like well, we had that kind of model, but we want to do it more now and kind of have that face-to-face -face interaction where they just get together and have a project for that week or whatever. Okay, and they should approach it on that camp. Yeah. Okay. Would you guys ever think of actually relocating if all the dev guys to one area and then scatter your support team over the world? Has that ever been a... I think our philosophy is uh, more of the 37 Signals uh, who just launched uh, that remote uh, book going through it, saying that you don't actually need an office and okay. uh, I think uh, we, we, we built the business just being in, in our home office and uh, we see how efficient that is and it's not for everybody of course but mm -hmm. uh, I think uh, mo more and more businesses will uh, work remotely and, uh, and I don't think it's beneficial. Well, it might be like having small trips where you meet together, but not like locating everybody to one place because I mean they have family and friends where they live, so they don't they don't want to relocate. So you mean the model the model at the moment is actually working very well, and and we have the benefit of hiring the best developers because we can take from anywhere in the world. Yeah, yeah, actually that's quite cool. Right, next question. We highlight the next one there. There we go. What was your marketing strategy when you started out, and how was, how has that changed since? How has that changed since? Well, Mark's the marketing guy, so you can answer. <laughs> there we go. Mark the marketing guy. I don't think we had much of a marketing strategy when we started. I think, yeah, we were quite fortunate that we all had sort of a personal brand um, as freelancers, um, and we definitely leveraged that from the start. Um, and Elliot Joe Stocks, working with him. Um, and yeah, our first few themes after registering Woo themes, we worked with some incredibly talented designers. Um, with Tim Van Dam, who worked at Instagram, he's one of the oh, lead yeah? designers. He's now sure. gone to Dropbox. Um, Sarah Palmenter, who's um, was designer of the year 2012, I think, for .NET Awards. Um, who else is there? There are probably about 10 different Tim designers um, who Me? are all very well known. <laughs> <laughs> and um, yeah, big reaches and I mean we definitely leverage that um, yeah. and yeah going forward now I mean we still rely heavily on sort of word of mouth and um, with our freemium model and being you know having so many downloads on the WordPress repo that's obviously helped us uh, we're, we were I don't know if we are at the moment in the top 10 plugins on the repo wow. um, some we've had a lot of luck along the way sure. but um, yeah we we follow our data very closely now, and um, every marketing campaign we put together, we track heavily. And the more we find out, you know, the more Facebook and Twitter and um, text ads don't actually convert. 
Um, it's just creating an authentic relationship with a customer um, is what's so important. Our transparency and sort of content is king strategy on, on the blog, um, I think pays off massively there. Okay. Right, next question. Who asked this question? Does, does, does a person want to speak it out? There we go. Sorry, I can't spell what I'm trying to think. That's <laughs> <laughs> fine. I think the microphones um, are working. In terms of, because um, also not every founder has their own unique skills. One might be finance, the other one operations. Mm. Uh, of the founders who actually specialize in what, and how did that come together to actually help make the company success? Well, I think uh, Eddie was more of a finance guy. He wasn't the designer, but he obviously put together some code for us. And me and Mark, I was maybe 50-50. Mark was maybe more of a designer, I guess. Mm. So he didn't want to touch code. I got interested in code since I was already a programmer. But I was never taught PHP, so I just learned that uh, by myself. And uh, I think uh, that we kind of saw our strengths and I focused on support and uh, programming uh, and design and Mark more on design and marketing and then AD f was more of the finance uh, and also being the personal brand of Wu Themes going forward so he, he because me and Mark wanted to kind of just be in the background a bit and let him lead the show and, and be the, the blogger that he was from the beginning. Awesome. Next question. Has the company ever experienced failure? Who asked this question? Uh, also me. Also you. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Asking good questions there. Right. Um, has the company ever experienced like severe failure? Uh, maybe not publicly. And what was that failure and how did you actually overcome it? I think we've had catastrophic failure. <laughs> Our website was hacked. Um, we were down for 72 hours. Your complete blackout. Um, our website, yeah, somehow a hacker got onto our website deleted everything off the server and our backups, even though they were on another server, there was sort of a back door to get to it and they deleted the backups as well. So we, uh, we lost, I think we were lucky we had a, a, a another demo site where we were <laughs> developing and that, but that was uh, one and a half months old so we had lost one and a half months data of that and we kind of felt like the this biggest after amateur the WooCommerce launch when the we were great we growth. felt like the biggest amateurs uh, so that was probably our biggest uh, or worst hour yeah I think Whoa. trusting your host providers implicitly is dangerous and, <laughs> and yeah now we've got backups upon backups upon and backups offline backups and yeah yeah daily offline everywhere yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's it okay I think, uh, there's Sorry. probably some more there uh, I mean that we had products that uh, or marketing that failed as well where we wanted to go into other markets like for example Expression Engine and uh, mm -hmm. Magento and Drupal, Drupal uh, and we made themes for, th for those platforms but we saw uh, no sales compared to WordPress and we kind of stuck with that for maybe six months or something and then we decided just to close that so down. So it didn't work at all? Didn't That's well, really interesting. Compared to WordPress it yeah, was I think so we were naive. We thought you know, we could just replicate our business model on a different content management system and the but audience was exactly so. the same. Yeah, yeah. But uh, you, it just shows you how big WordPress is compared to those other systems. So other systems yeah. Yeah. And how simple WordPress is, like the templating engine and the way we had to port our themes to these other well, content management systems that were a lot task. more difficult to customize and support and um, yeah, difficult for us to sort of keep up that reputation we had within the WordPress community and in these other content management systems. Because Magenta is quite a big um, e-commerce yeah. system, so you would have thought that that's skinning for that would be like extremely That's important. Like, uh, the guy I work with in my old company, he actually saw that I was able to leave the company and make a business, so he did the, exactly the same on Magento. Ooh. So he, uh, but he wasn't, he was only a one-man show, and he, so that money was okay for him, and w when we grew, we saw that WordPress was way bigger than Magento. And it's also, you have to be specialized in Magento to, to know how it works. Yeah. And, but uh, now he's actually transformed his business into being uh, more of a solutions partner for Magento. And he's the biggest in Norway now on oh, that platform. Okay. So he's so got, for him. So yeah, so he's got the biggest uh, sh web shops in Norway now running on Magento. Oh, Magento. Mm. Cool, next question is, how do you see WooCommerce developing in the future? Who asked this one? I did. There we go, the back. Yeah, South Africa, I mean, 80% of our sales come from the States. Um, 
followed by Europe, Australia, India. South Africa is only about 10th on the list, but it was, I think, about 17th about a year ago. Um, so there's definite growth that we're seeing. And um, yeah, there's still a lot of limitations with regard to e-commerce in South Africa and taking recurring payments. <coughs> I think that's a big limitation. But a lot of payment gateways, like Payfast, singling them out here, no pressure. But <laughs> they're hopefully working on solutions there. And I believe PayPal also are hopefully going to be doing something soon as well. I, I, we saw a, we went to a conference called Pressnomics in, in the States and we saw uh, Carlos from Envato have a presentation and he showed us uh, an e-commerce graph which was on top of normal commerce and, and it was only a, like a fraction. So there's still that many shops that need to kind of get online. Uh, so I, I think we're just at the start of mm. kind of e-commerce and uh, especially in South Africa being sure. a sure. bit behind on uh, on broadband and stuff like that compared to Norway. Yeah. Yeah. I've got a theory that uh, um, logistics companies are going starting really, really well mm. due to the e-commerce shops. It's a thought. Mm. Okay. What do you remember as your biggest hurdle to ask this question? There we go. Um, I just wanted to know, um, regarding your hurdles, what, in, what was your biggest hurdles? Regarding like, um, employing staff across many different countries, how do you go to interview them, how do you manage them, that kind of thing? Um, I think, well, our biggest hurdle, staff aside, was yeah. um, we've always made decisions based on our own intuition. and. Um, as we've grown and more and more business reliant on us, we can't always trust our intuition because it's not the same thing as what data is dictating. So yeah, I'll just keep reiterating that data is so important when you're going through this growth phase to follow the data. Um, with regards to hiring staff, yeah, we had a very simple um, recruiting process to begin with. You know, just a Skype interview. Um, we give them a certain amount of tickets or maybe a development project to work with um, and see how they perform based on that. But yeah, I think what we've learned is that it's just as important to have a good culture fit. Um, they can be hugely skilled, but if they don't get along with the rest of the team, then you're going to create a divide. Um, yeah, so it's just balancing the two. I think we've uh, been lucky with the hiring people because it's always people who are passionate about the brand and we hire from within our community and so we haven't actually had too many people leave the business in our five years so but uh, now we also try and make sure that the interview process is longer than it was before just so we get the right type of person for the rest of the team so I think that's like what been a big hurdle on the hiring front but we're, mm. I think we're in good hands now with our uh, chief happiness officer Mikey in the States doing the interviews. <laughs> I, I, I would never be hired if I went through the interview. So. <laughs> <laughs> cool. The next question, what is your fond... No. Oh yeah, this is... What is your fondest Ruthim memory? Who said that? Who asked that one? There we go. I was hiring Maria. I, was yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think cool. probably meeting him for the first time. Uh, just sitting face to face and kind of feeling that enthusiasm, uh, uh, knowing we were actually a business, not, not just something online that uh, we went and sat down in front of the computer every day and suddenly like seeing that this was the future and uh, yeah, I think that's kind of my yeah. biggest moment. What about you? I think, yeah, our last week trip in Leiden, mm. um, there were 30 of us there and just meeting up at the airport at a coffee shop Oh. everyone arriving from all corners of the world and just to see everyone meeting for the first time a lot of them um, and just seeing you know how big the Wu Team's family has grown yeah. um, and just the connections and the diversity on the team Maria she lives in an RV and travels across America drinking beer <laughs> <laughs> literally awesome. go to her site roamingpint.com <laughs> um, and she does support for us um, sure yeah, over a 4G connection in the back of our RV. So, so it's Something just amazing to have the right. diversity sure. on the team like that. That's really awesome. What a nice one, Maria. <laughs> okay, I think this will do uh, one or two more. Is Woo Themes officially a Cape Town based company? Who asked that one? I didn't. There we go. You've answered it since. This has been answered. Yeah, that's yeah. right. 
headquarters down here. Yeah, in Durbanville, so behind the Borovos curtains are very much Cape Town based. Um, <laughs> we're hoping to move a bit closer to Cape Town oh, is it? Oh, you guys. next year, yeah. Okay. But yeah. The entire tug of war to. Tug it's a bit of a check, yeah. A bit of a <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, cool. Um, did you collaborate with WordPress founder Matt Mullenweg at the point when designing themes? Who asked the question? Yeah, at the back I there. That. I was just wondering what uh, the nature of the relationship was between WordPress uh, during the beginning. Yeah, I mean, at, at the beginning, I don't think we had much of a relationship with Matt Mullenweg, but over the years, we've developed um, yeah, a very good relationship with him. Um, yeah, I mean, a lot of the decisions we've made. Um, you know, have have been difficult decisions um, with regards to our relationship with Matt Munwig, um, with his his views at that time um, on commercial theming and commercial plugin development. <coughs> but um, the whole ecosystem has just grown and matured massively, and and yeah, I'd like to think that um, if there was anything serious happening in WordPress, he'd let us know, and vice versa. If we'd make any big move. Um, yeah, we've got that open channel with him. I think he was the guy who actually uh, gave us the push to go to GPL because before mm. that we were actually licensed uh, where we said you're not allowed to distribute our themes or products on any website. Uh, uh, but uh, with GPL you're allowed to do that. But uh, we thought that once we went GPL everybody would just steal our products and we would be out of business. But he made us take that push and we never looked back. So. I, I think we uh, that kind of got us closer to the kind of WordPress way of thinking, and 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 that's why we made WooCommerce uh, open source, and, and and kind of our whole whole business is reliant on that now. So I think we've got a good relationship going forwards as well. Hopefully, yeah. Mm. yeah. Cool. Um, did WooThemes get any sort of funding to get off the ground? Or was it simply based on taking a chance? Who asked that question? Here we go, in the front. Yeah. I do. Um, I've heard Megan's story how you, you guys tried to convince him to, to like leave his full-time job and go freelance. Um, Mark, how did you, were you collaborating with Eddie at that time? How was it? Yeah, so I had freelance clients that I was working with. Um, but we're very much a proudly bootstrap business. And we're very lucky that we're selling a digital product that was only dependent on our time at the start. So we didn't have any overheads really and as I said we saw those e-junkie receipts coming in from day one so we were profitable pretty much from day one um, but yeah we definitely attribute that to a lot of luck and being at the right time at the right place I think WordPress theme developers and plugin developers now have quite a, a challenge um, with so much competition and so many different marketplaces out there Tips for startups looking to find A players for initial growth to ask that one. Yeah. Here we go. Yeah, just sort of as a strat challenge like finding people who at the start care about the business and its growth rather than people just wanting a job. Um, Tips or well, I, I, I would say uh, send an email to Adi because that's his new business is basically built on that, helping out Public entrepreneurs. Beta. Yeah, he's got a business called Public Beta, uh, helping out other people who are trying to get into business or are in business already and that's how we started out so <laughs> give, give him an email yeah just networking as much as you can like at these sort of events and I mean if you're looking for co-founders as we've said like you know I think the success we've had has largely been due down to the the diversity we've got amongst us uh, but it's also helped that we had that sort of reach as well that somewhat audience um, that we could sort of use so yeah pick your co-founders wisely and yeah just on Twitter I mean Twitter is such a great tool that wasn't really available to us when we started or we didn't really use it it was very new at the time but the way you can just reach out to anyone in the world now just leveraging that sort of you know those social channels cool uh, next one I think two more questions was any form of marketing that was gone? Okay. No. Mm. Thoughts on thoughts on Wix.com. Aha. Who asked that question? <laughs> there we go. Simon. You're not from Wix, are you? 
No, no, I just use Wix on my website. My yeah, really well. I mean, I see them in my Facebook feed the whole time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty much the, how much I know about them, really. Um, is it a hosted service? I don't even know that. Yeah, I mean, HTML5 and pretty like it's what you see is what you get in Instagram. That's like a WYSIWYG like dragon mm -hmm. on your site. It's like YOLO. There's yeah, there's quite a few of those on the internet. Yeah. So uh, we haven't really paid much attention to those, uh, being that we're kind of quite a separate business from that. So uh, I think hosted services, and I, I guess that's what Wix is. I've never seen it. Mm -hmm. Is it um, a South African thing? No, it's overseas. It's and, and so, yeah. don't know if you know Yola, yola.com. Yeah. Um, and he's startup, it was exactly the same as that, okay. basically. Yeah. I thought the beauty of WordPress is that it's got this massive community, GPL license code, you've got complete ownership of your own content, um, and you can you know, plug in whatever functionality you like on top of it. I don't know if Wix has that flexibility. And it's got a lot of the plugin functionality. I think what, what I read quite a lot of articles on which one's better, which one's not better. And all the articles I read said that with, if you don't want to spend the money, it's cheaper to get going. Mm. And whereas with WordPress, you're probably going to need somebody who knows what they're doing at some point to tell you how to make it work better. Mm. Yeah, I mean, remember, WordPress is two part. It's .com and .org. Yes. And .com, you can get a free blog up and running in minutes, and it's very easy to do. Um, .org, yeah, you've got to download the source code, host it yourself. Or if you go with a the host, they might have a one-click install. But yeah, there's a certain complexity mm. to getting set up. Um, but I'd say it's definitely worth it in the long run. But you could always start on a WordPress.com site and it's very easy to export your data and then move to .org. As opposed from a Wix move to WordPress, maybe that's a little bit more complicated. Mm. Yeah. Cool. Last question. What are your biggest plans for Wix Themes WooCommerce? I think we touched on that in uh, one of the other questions. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Thoughts for 2014, basically. I think yeah. WooCommerce we want to make as lean as possible. There's still a lot of refactoring we can do with the code. Um, and yeah, we want to really work on the API there. Um, big plans for that and just to allow others to extend on top of it. And like I said, we've got a few extensions, bigger extensions that we're working on and potentially some sort of SaaS offering. Okay. Um, so we've got problems. But yeah, just to try and simplify it even more. Um, whilst making it even more extendable, which is quite a difficult that's task, but yes, that's the plan. And also growing the community to, to be more inclusive because it's, uh, there's really no platform for WooCommerce uh, people to actually discuss now. We haven't, we've got a closed community forum which is only for our customers, so we want, want to kind of broaden that and, and maybe do an open community forum or something like that. Cool. Plus, thank you very, very much. Ooh, thanks very much. You. This time here. Thank you very, very much for coming cool. through, chatting to us. us. Thank you very much, guys, for joining us here tonight. Um, thanks once again to our sponsors, PayFast. If we need to speak to you about uh, payment gateways, the guy in the salmon pink shirt. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, there's uh, Woo Themes. Thank you, guys, for sponsoring the event. So cool. eat some drinks on these guys. Mm -hmm. And uh, Atlantic Imbiso for sponsoring this beautiful event that we have here. Um, guys, please meet with people. Oh, we've still got two more things we need to do. We've got the networker competition. Right, so who's got the most amount of business cards? Who thinks they've got the most? Okay, who's got five business cards from everybody else? Four, five, <laughs> saw a hand there up there. Three business cards. <laughs> who's got business cards from other people here? How many, many business cards? How many have you got? Four. She's got four. Have you got one? One. One, two. Two, have you got two? Have you got four? Three. Four, okay, so that's four cards. She's busy scratching for these cards. I used to lose points. Remember I said three cards? What's going on? No? Have you got three? Okay, can anybody read three cards? Who brought business cards here? Ah, ah, ah. Three cards, okay. Marianne, you get to win a competition. You get a winner from the Wu Themes, which is? Yeah, we'll give you an extension or a theme. Just come kind of chat to us afterwards. There we go, one of the premium ones. And you also get to get free entrance into next okay. month's one, which will be next year, because this is the final one for this year. Then the Twitter competition. Paul, can you yeah. please do your thing? Yeah, absolutely. So, um, yeah, again, as ever, uh, as a steady flow of tweets, guys, thank you very much for your contributions. It's brilliant. 
I think everyone's matching on the idea that uh, you guys apply this match, which is absolutely fantastic. Uh, you guys are scaling like your business is incredible. And that's what everyone's talking about here. Right? The fact that it's such a sustainable business that way, it's all a very close network of business, and that's what people are talking about. But um, I wanted to keep in line with Woo themes and the theme that was in November. And <laughs> it's not really talking about your business, but one that actually stood out was from Ursula, <laughs> which I love. Um, <laughs> Ursula said, you know, free advice to be a millionaire, which is obviously great, it's a good night. Just not sure about this dude with the word next. <laughs> 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 good word. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Right, no, Ursula. Very nice, nice tweet. There we go once again. You yeah. get to win. Theme or plugin of your choice. Come chat with us after. There we go. Cool. And also get to free entrance in the next one. So there we go. Thank you very much. Our next event will be on the 16th of January. We'll be chatting to the very first of African talk show host um, Felicia Mabusa Suttle. She'll be here. She's coming in from America. Um, so hopefully it'll be a nice springboard mm -hmm. to the rest of them. And then we might be having something up in December, just a little get together with drinks. Nothing official though. But do you sign up, startupgrind.clrz, you're able to get into our newsletter. And you can also see what the rest of the world are, because Startup Grind is an international network with 60 chapters right around the world, spanning across 20 countries. Startupgrind.com. Thank you very much, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome. Well, you stood through all of it. Yeah, I did. I made it through.